as a result of this so-called war on drugs and crack. So, to me, again, it's about hegemony. It's about domination. It's about control. And they, this institution called the justice system is a way, a means of doing this. This is why Michelle Alexander's book is so powerful because what she does is she documents we as activists cannot afford just to say a thing. We need to have hardcore statistical data and stories like what you're doing in terms of testimony to document to our people because our people are skeptical in many areas. They say, well, you know, we got caught up. Well, yeah, but what is the reason? Before we open it up, um, I just want to thank the OBJ and you did not say, but I want our audience to know that he has spent most of his professional adult life in the West Side of Chicago providing counseling services on the ground in the community. And so he knows of what he speaks from the point of view of a professional who has had to pick up the pieces of the damages that have been caused by this system. Um, I also want to pick up on your point, though, about the relationship of this drug war, because it was in the Nixon context that he then declared the war on drugs. And then it was Reagan who put the pieces together that made that so important. But as we go through this day, we are charged to think about the implications of our conversations and observations for public policy and for strategic next steps. So that means next steps in terms of the larger community in which we find ourselves in, but at the same time, our own respective communities in which we have to take ownership of. And so one of the very specific things we know about this war on drugs is that we have got to create the, um, the energy and the advocacy to impact public policy so that drug addiction is seen as a health issue and not an issue to be resolved by incarceration. Because 80% of those who are in prison faced with drug um, charges are nonviolent offenders. And so if they had been in the upper middle class white communities, their drug habits would have been seen as a health issue that needed treatment as opposed to incarceration. The other thing is that where do you spend your money? Follow the money from your personal checkbook to the federal budget tells you about your priorities. And any nation that is spending 10 times more on keeping people incarcerated than they are on educating their children tells you something about their priorities. And when you look at state budgets, when you look at federal budgets, you are likely to see a 10 times more ratio of dollars being expended to keep people incarcerated as opposed to teaching them their ABCs and their reading. And so it is important, I think, for us to take on this challenge of what it means to restore community. And that gets back to the issue of the land. That's very fundamental. Who controls the land? Who controls the community, right? And so I'm reminded of when Chancellor Williams' book came out in his little preface. He said there was a conversation between an old man and a young man. And this is a, a good gathering here because we're blessed to have young people. We have high school students now engaged in sessions as we are in small groups having these kinds of conversations. But Chancellor Williams in the destruction of black civilization says there was a conversation going on between an old man and a young man. And the young man said, you know, I heard that at one time the people of Sumer was a thriving black civilization. What happened? And the old man turned to the young man and he said, they forgot to tell their story. And so we are charged with an act of reclamation of memory, with an act of reclamation of responsibility, and with acts of reclamation of standing up, speaking truth to power, with a righteous sense that we are called by our Creator to do so. Now we have people at this table, in this conversation, who have been on both sides of the prison bar, who have struggled with and successfully engaged in restoration, who have been
been developing institutions to, to, to cherish and affirm and nurture our children from the cradle to the grave. And so we just like for them to help us in this conversation and to speak about this topic and remember that there are those around the world who are, who are listening to your conversation. My name is Susan, and I was incarcerated in the Illinois Department of Corrections for 22 years, 7 months, and 22 days. Can you speak up, brother? I'm sorry. Um, my name is Yusuf uh, My name is Yusuf Mosley, and I was in uh, incarcerated in the Illinois Department of Corrections for 22 years, 7 months, and 22 days. Uh, the reason I mention it like that is so people get a sense that I was in there, you count. If you don't know how to count, you know how to count by the time you walk out of it. Because the years start piling up on you, the walls start closing in on you, you lose your family, you lose your friends, you lose everything. And you come out empty handed. Some people come out with a vengeance that they want to put on the society. Some come out with a uh, new uh, spiritual awakening that they may have experienced in the church. And some come back and just come back. So I'm one of those who were uh, well taught my lectures of history and culture in the community of Mohammed and others like her, her husband Jay. He went to the university. He gave me a ground in the wilderness to enable me to sustain my consciousness while I walked through there. Because that's worse than walking through hell with gasoline going on. It's because you are conscious and you see the doors of our ethical kind of dealing with each other in that setting. I was in Stateville first, I ended up in what they call the White Boys Joint in Menard way down south, where they thought they were in Mississippi in the 1940s and so they still using the word boy, the N word, and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to deal on the negative, because I, I, through the teachings that I learned from ancestral knowledge and wisdom, I went through those exploration points of those 22 years, based on the group knowledge that they had given me to commit personal. And one of the things I found is that it has to be a process that Malcolm X made we need to wake up, we need to clean up, and we need to stand up. And I'm, when I say we, I'm talking about those of us who are in costume. Because we know or knew that efforts like these, that like Michelle were taking place even before she wrote the book. But when she wrote the book, that coincided with all of us.